Hello viewers, I'm SB, and welcome back to Endless Legend Inferno, where today, by popular demand, we are beginning a new game as The Forgotten. Before we get going here, I do want to apologize for the quality of my voice. I'll be honest with you, I don't really know if I sound weird to people outside of my own head, but I sound real weird in my head right now. Uh, still kind of getting over that throat thing from earlier this week. I feel great, I feel totally better, but um, I sound very strange in my own head. So, Forgotten. Masters of Deception, Infiltration, and Sabotage. The arrival of the Forgotten among the factions of Ariga will change everything. From pillaging extractors to assassinating governors, the rules of conflict will never be the same again. Not actually telling us anything about who the Forgotten are, just like, hey, the espionage system, we implemented that at the same time we put these guys in. Please use it. Uh, we're going to talk, I have a lot of things to say about the espionage system. We're going to talk about it this game. This is the game during which I will say those things. Uh, but basically, the Forgotten are people who were cast out of the vault. Uh, so they, in a lot of ways, they are sort of like a weird reflection of the Vaulters, mechanically. Uh, sort of a, like a negation of the Vaulters. So the way that manifests first here is that we are science-phobic. The science resource does not exist for us. Uh, there is no science on tiles. We cannot get science from any source. The technologies that produce buildings that get, produce science do not appear on our technology wheel. We do not have access to the normal research mechanic. We can, however... Uh, just straight up buy technology with dust. We can still receive technology in trades with other players, and we have another method of acquiring technology that we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, we are dust opportunists. This is our dust eclipse thing. During eclipses, infiltrated forgotten spies gain the dust opportunists infiltration action. Uh, you know what would be really neat is some text here that tells us exactly what that does. Taking advantage of dust's magical propensity to literally drift out of imperial coffers during eclipses. Infiltrated Forgotten Spies can potentially steal small fortunes during the long twilight night. Okay, well, I mean, I could have guessed from the name that it allows you to steal dust. I just wish there was some, like, information on the exact mechanics of that here. I guess we'll figure it out when we do it. We are expert foragers. This, uh, the word forager should be in quotation marks here. We gain loot when destroying a neutral village. We are foraging things that living people already own from their dead bodies after we have made them dead. Um... We still will want to be getting quests from minor villages, uh, mostly, but this trait makes it so that when we get a bad quest, it is more profitable to us to kill the village than it is to just leave them standing. Uh, the loot that we get will mostly be dust, but sometimes also it is um, strategics or luxuries. It's fine. It's a fine little boost. We are knowledge seekers, sort of, after a, after a fashion. Uh, so we lose the infiltration action, decrease science production, which spies of other empires have, and instead gain the ability to just straight up copy technologies that the spied on player knows that we do not yet know. Uh, this is going to be an important method of acquiring tech for us in the game. Uh, buying technology is super good in the early game, but the cost of technology, the cost of purchasing a technology rises each time you acquire a technology, so it gets way too expensive to be reliable really quickly. Uh, so we will be stealing tech from other players quite a bit. Uh, practiced pillage. Uh, we are better at pillaging. Specifically, really, what it is is we're better at dealing fortification damage. This increases our ability to pillage stuff because the speed with which an army pillages an improvement is based on that army's fortification damage. Uh, but it also means that we're better at sieging than other, uh, other factions are. To be honest with you, I don't do a lot of sieging even when I go to war because a lot of the time uh, when you're facing a massively industrially and economically superior enemy speed is the only really ad only real advantage you have uh, so it is often the case that we need to roll up to cities and attack them that very turn but we might get some use out of this and the, the pillage speed does matter pillaging is fun fun and necessary All right, we have some technologies we'll talk about our unique technologies when we get in game we do need to talk about our units really quickly though settler we have a non-cavalry settler which is to say four movement speed and our Settler, like all of our military units, has the Stealth Capacity. What this means is that uh, this unit, or an army containing entirely Stealth units, is invisible to enemies unless those enemies are directly adjacent to it. Uh, there is an exception to this. Some, some things, some, some armies and buildings have True Sight, which allows them to see Stealth units within their entire vision as normal. Um, towers have True Sight, and there is also an accessory, or maybe even a couple accessories, that give True Sight that you can get access to. I do not know how commonly the AI uh, get those, 
We may or may not be able to stealth around enemy armies a lot. I guess we'll find out once we get in game here. Uh, our basic military unit is the assassin. Like I said, stealth. Also, assassins have the dual wield trait. So we can uh, we can wield a weapon in each hand, a one-handed weapon in each hand. And we get only half of the stats of the offhand weapon. But uh, this is pretty good, especially considering that we cannot use shields. Um, this is sort of a it's sort of a weird reflection of the Vaulter's Techno Lover trait, right? Because the Techno Lover trait gives you like half again the stats of your cool strategic weapons, and this is a way that we too can get half again the stats of our cool strategic weapons. Um, you only get half of the stats of your offhand weapon, but you do get full use of all of its capacities, which means that we can like wield a sword in one hand for infantry slayer and an axe in the other hand for range slayer and have full use of both of those capacities, which is cool. Now we also have the acrobat capacity, which allows us to move through enemy units in combat. So sort of like the way flying units can. And you can see from the stats there, 44 attack, 34 damage, but only 92 life. These are um, fast moving, very murder focused infantry, not very survivable. We are a very offensive faction. Uh, our second unit is a ranged unit, the Predator, 48 attack, but only 20 base damage. It's a little misleading, though, because a lot of the damage of the Predator comes from the Predator's Mark. So when a, when a Predator attacks an enemy, it deals bonus damage based on the number of Predator's Marks that enemy has on it, and then after dealing damage, applies a Predator's Mark to the enemy. So the first Predator will deal very poor damage. The second one will deal more and will stack up another mark. The third one will deal even more and stack up yet another mark. So we're way uh, we're way worse at like one shotting uh, enemies, weak enemies than a ranged unit that is fully equipped usually is. But we're much much better at fighting things that are tough. So like if an enemy gets Serum of Iteru, for example, like we saw at the end of the last game, we're not totally screwed. Um, we're pretty good at fighting things that are pretty big. Our final military unit is the Mist. It is a fast moving flying unit. Uh, the faster than shadows capacity gives you extra damage, but I don't remember exactly how it works. It's some kind of area damage thing. It might just be chain lightning, or it might be like you deal bonus damage to everything that's adjacent to the mist, or... But it's it's something that makes us deal more damage. Um, hopefully we'll get to use some of these guys. It's probably going to be a fairly military game, so... Alright, and with that, uh, we're basically ready to go. Oh, I did turn on partial Empire scores. I meant to do this last game. Uh, but this means Empires will only show up on the scoreboard if we have a spy embedded within them. This was a suggestion from a couple of people to give us some extra reason to use the espionage system, and obviously it's not really necessary this game, where we already have good reasons to use the espionage system. Um, I kind of like there being an incentive to use spies, because there's very little reason to use spies normally, uh, but I also don't love having another arena in which we are inferior to the AI, considering how thinly stretched we are already. We'll play a game or two with this. We'll see about turning it on and off. I'm not I'm not 100% sold on it. Aside from that, all the game settings are the same. Still very random maps, because I feel, you know, I like the randomness. I'll set these player colors to something a little bit more reasonable, and then, I suppose, have at it. You know, one, uh, one upside of this weird voice problem of me sounding strange in my head is that it makes me feel like I could do a pretty good Tom Waits impression right now. I sound real gravelly. Like, we're all gonna be... Well, that's... Okay, that's a little more Dr. Teeth, really, than Tom Waits. But I guess I have a pretty good Dr. Teeth impression right now. Or at least it sounds to me like I have a pretty good Dr. Teeth impression. What's the thing that Dr. Teeth would say? Hey, hey, animal, play drums in my band. I'm Dr. Teeth. Yeah, that's not bad. That's all right. Uh, so I do want to say... I guess maybe I should wait until after the cinematic, because we're about to load into that. I'll say a thing, in a second, after the cinematic. Hey game, that was your cue. The cinematic, this is the time for that thing now. Okay, I guess I'm going to fill a little bit. Hey, these guys... Uh, nope, never mind. Ages ago, we were banished by our kin. In fear and shame, they turned their backs on us, closing the door. We survived on a world gone mad by embracing the madness. The 
Thus shadow and silence became our allies, and they made us strong. Now the time for payment of ancient debts has come. The price will be high. Okay, so what I was about to say, uh, before that started properly loading there, is that uh, nothing ruins an attempt to seem cool and scary faster than seeming like you're trying to seem cool and scary. And these guys really drip trying to seem cool and scary with all the tattoos and the, you know, it's a little, um, <clears throat> it's a little, um, edgelordy, I guess is the word I want. So let's get in here. I gotta say, I'm uh, not seeing very good terrain here at first, I suppose. Let's go ahead and create that save, in case people would like to play along at home. This looks to me like it might be one of those ones where we don't settle in our initial region, because this looks awful. Uh, there's a lot of variability. I want everybody to be a little prepared here for the fact that there's a lot of variability in the uh, power of a Forgotten Start. Probably more than uh, almost any other faction. Let's go look this way. A lot, a lot comes down to how many ruins you get to search, how many of those ruins give you dust as opposed to other less valuable rewards, and things like that. Um, so this, we might, we might lose to our initial starting position once or twice here before we manage to figure this out right. Well, I'll tell you, this looks pretty bad. Pretty grim position here. Uh, this looks kind of nice. Maybe we just come over here. Yeah, I think that's where I'm ending up on this. We could go up here and take advantage of the step soil, which really is a very good anomaly. But, like, look at how bad the tiles are. We would just have the... We could start over here. Come on, give me that tooltip. There we go. 10, 5, 9 with 10 approval is pretty soft. We start over here. We don't have any dust to start with, which is actually very bad. But we don't exactly know what's going on. There could be dust tiles nearby. And we start near the river, which can help with our dust problems due to um, aquapulvistics. Only during the summer, but still. Something. I think we might do that. I'm going to, yeah, let's do that. Not happy about it, though. As you can see, some tiles are just uh, worse for us than they are for everybody else. Sort of necrophagy. Um, just, we don't get any compensation for the lost resources like the uh, the bro uh, Broken Lords do, where they at least get a point of extra dust on each dust tile. It's just garbage. So, we have to be very careful about our settles, so as not to uh, be in a region where there is too much garbage. Okay. Well, that's compelling. Boy, that's us not settling until turn three if we want to take optimal advantage of that, but look at how much industry and food that is. We're going to have no money left. Whatever. That's really good. Like, we should really take advantage of that. Okay, we just got to find some ruins is all. We're gonna, everything's going to come back together because we're going to find some ruins. And we're going to not walk on the lava a whole bunch. Ah, there are ruins on the other side of that lava. Uh, I'm going to resist the urge to walk in the lava. Let's see. This region has Bos as its uh, as its minor faction. And it might be multiple Bos villages. A big, a big benefit of not settling in your starting region is that you can get more than one village. Because your starting region always only has one. Right, let's make sure that we poke around a little bit more. You always want to search ruins in your home region or in your region before you settle in it, because sometimes they'll give you that quest. A quest that rewards you for settling. Alright, so at least two villages. What is the right version of this? Do we settle here? 2216 with 10 approval, or here, 241401 with 10 approval. This has. This spot only has one river tile. This spot has two river tiles, and you can expand in almost any direction to get more. This is the right one. I mean, 
We burned a lot of money by not settling for three turns, and we're definitely behind now, but holy crap, this is a good site for a city. Oh, I'm... I meant to do something there. Uh, the cost for popping a luxury booster is five plus five for each city you have. If you get a luxury booster before you found your first city, you can pop it at a cost of five resources. Should have done that before settling. That said, we're absolutely still popping this. 50% extra food in our current position is a huge amount of food. Alright, uh, we're going to have to deal with our dust problems, and quickly. Hopefully, some of these ruins will help. Okay, not bad. A little cliffier than I would like over here, but in a lot of ways, this is pretty nice. Okay, so let's uh, let's discuss the actual plan here. Well, first of all, obviously, we can get to work on our Founder's Memorial. If I pull off a of food, yep, we're still, still producing a citizen in a single turn. So, we can buy technology straight up. Uh, it's pretty cheap at first. Each time you acquire a tech, the cost of buying future techs will go up. This is going to get expensive fast. I kind of think we want to go Empire Mint first. Just owing to our kind of weird position here. We'll get through that Empire Mint pretty quickly, though. And then that'll help bolster our scientific progress. Uh, obviously, Mill Foundry and, um, and the ability to chat with minor factions, both are still pretty important. We don't necessarily want to kill everybody. But... We'll have to get that figured out. Hopefully we'll we'll keep pulling dust out of the ruins, because our next tech is going to be a little bit more expensive. Yeah, 40. I would love to pick up Mill Foundry and Language Square quickly. Alright, let's move on here. Let's start getting our faction quest. I do not remember our faction quest very well, although that is glowing now, which I think is promising. My dreams are still haunted by the night we lost my friend, my rock, the previous leader of the Warfarer's Divinity, Master Shadow Ziema Adya. They came upon us not three days out from the Targadian Mountains, shadowy figures in the night. At first we thought them simple bandits preying on hapless travelers, desperate rogues who'd made a fatal mistake in selecting their victims. We imagined we would kill them easily enough, but we were wrong. Had Arla not been left behind, sick with fever, we may have mastered them. But in our arrogance we underestimated them. Ziema battled formidably, saving many of our lives, but that only aided our attackers' true intentions. They wanted not to rob us or kill us, but to steal away Ziema herself. And they succeeded. And it wasn't only her they took. Some of my most experienced warriors also vanished that night. In the aftermath, stranded in the Oregon wilds, bloodied and exposed, there was little we could do except carry on with our original plan, without Ziema or the others. Every day the same questions burned in my mind. Who kidnapped Ziema? Did one of our party betray our intentions to the, to the spineless trinity who rule the forgotten in Dagari Tanga, the fearful High Consecrate and the feeble Masters of the Divinities? Those rulers who have forgotten our motto, We are the power in the shadows? See this right here, this is what I was talking about earlier. Or was she taken by some other enemy who escapes my attention? Questions burn. The one that burns the most, though, is this. Where is she now? Before we settled Heward, all I could do was seethe and agitate. Now, though, now I can begin to get answers. Now I will do everything in my power to find Ziema, and have my vengeance on those who stole her away. Your plan to rebuild a, forgo a new forgotten civilization has gotten off to a pretty bad start. Of your two most powerful allies, Arla never made the journey, and Ziema has been kidnapped by unknown forces. So to locate her, we must speak to an Ursus village in the nearby region. Sorry, must pacify. And Ursus Village in the nearby region of Nothen. Okay, well. Let's, uh, first of all, we know there's two ruins over here we could search. If we get dust out of these, it could be pretty good for us. Okay, augmented extractor, not really what I'm looking for right now. Please, dust. Nope. Ten gold, well. Ten gold will result in us getting some additional dust, but I really need to be able to... to by attacks that I can talk to these guys. Uh, might you see a ruin anywhere? Okay. Got a couple over here. 
do like the... No Ooh, we got the lucky reward. So we are definitely just going to buy Language Square and have a quick chat with these guys. We may not have to kill them. I hope we don't have to kill them. Return to this village when you're ready to give them 50 dust. Well, all right, let's do it. Not happy about it, but we are probably going to be able to complete the quest immediately afterward. Bring five titanium to the other Ursus village. Okay, we have the five titanium. That'll move our faction quest along pretty quickly, actually. And hopefully we can get enough dust out of these ruins to still be able to pull Mill Foundry soon. So you might notice we're researching at a pretty impressive clip here. Uh, it looks, you know, this buying technologies thing works out really well for the first little while. Alright, so we gave them our titanium. They have become pacified. We got 80 dust for doing that, which is awesome, actually. Treachery. The Ursus claimed dissident forgotten hiding in ruins in the nearby region of Dells played a part. Find and defeat them. Where did we... There was a button on that I could have just clicked. Okay, it's that ruin. Alright, so... When we search this ruin, some bad guys are going to pop out. We're going to have to deal with that. Um, and when we defeat those enemies, something's going to happen. Uh, hold on, we'll talk about this in a second. We got the Centaur Quest again. I love the Centaur Quest. Uh, when we defeat those enemies, I do remember this. We're going to get um, we're going to get two Predators. Now, like there's a couple of other quests that do this that spawn you some early units, like the Ardent Mages thing, uh, and like that. If we get the two Predators before we have the Predator design, we will never be able to retrofit them. It, for some reason, it will not consider them to be the same unit type, or they have to make some kind of like weird thing happen to give us units of a type that we haven't earned yet, I guess. Um, but So we, we probably want to hold off on this until we have the Predator design. I definitely need Mill Foundry. Predator design is going to be 80, and we're hemorrhaging cash so that's this gonna be a little tricky okay we got this thing using the centaur unit visit the three indicated minor faction villages in fewer than 20 turns so it's that one right below us one way up there and one over here in green territory okay that's interesting well i suppose our centaur should start by going this way and get this one right now And that's him for the turn. Let's move this guy in this direction toward the ruin. Mm, I was really hoping we would find another ruin on the way in. Okay. So we could search this right now. When we search this, the enemy army will spawn. But I believe they... Like, we could run away, right? What I'm thinking is we can move our hero to right here. And then search the ruin to trigger the quest, then search the ruin again to maybe get money out of it, and then run away immediately. And uh, maybe avoid having to engage in combat with them right away. Hopefully give ourselves time to make some money, or maybe we just get enough dust from this ruin to cover everything. But we are definitely in a, in a bit of a place here, in a bit of a spot as regards money. Yes, we're coming along on that. Producing population really quickly here. Okay. Do we want to pop the dust? I, I or the gold. I kind of want to save it until we have more buildings, so that we're um, we're getting a reduction on a larger amount of city upkeep. But maybe we need it right now, just because like I need to. We need to stop ha stop hemorrhaging dust so badly. Okay. Yep, that helps a lot. Now we're actually positive, so we could just wait a little bit. I don't want to do it with these guys nearby, though. Oh, they spawn without any points of movement. That's interesting. And we got the quest to search for Breakwall. Well, our centaur buddy can take care of that. Okay. So the Forgotten Faction tree is pretty bad. But I am almost 100% certain that our faction quest requires us to use this hero to spy. So we are going to want to go up the faction tree here because we want this double or nothing skill. And we'll talk about seniority bonuses and the spying capacity and stuff when we actually place our spy. For right now, let's just move forward here. Minus two turns on the assignment cooldown. 
No, the base assignment cooldown is five turns, so if you have both points of this, uh, it just means you can only reassign the hero once each turn. It's pretty okay. It's a fine skill. Not great, but not terrible. Uh, let's see if you can provide me with a little bit of money. Nope, no ruins to search. I do see that nice golden tree there, though. Ah, green is the cult. Starting near the cult player again, huh? This is going to be better for us than it was for the Alayi. Well, I guess I'm saying that because I'm like, yeah, we can take better advantage of the space. But also, I suppose the Alayi got a lot of benefit out of it because they were able to slow settle without having to worry about losing territory. Hmm. Well, I really, like I said, I really don't want to fight them until we get 13 more or 15 more dust. But I also don't want to wait a very long time here. Not getting any lucky ruins. Yeah, shoot. I want to be able to retrofit... Like, a base base predator is a pretty bad unit. They get good. Maybe they've fixed this issue? I wouldn't bet on it. There's definitely no ruins in the area for us to search. And I certainly... Like, we could pull people over to dust for just a turn... Just to get us to... Yeah, I guess we're just going to slow roll for a single turn. I really, really want to have the Predator design before we engage in combat here. Sucks to lose a turn of movement on the, the hero and everything, but I think this is the right way to do this. Why? I can't do math. What on earth? SB. Well, I guess we're doing the battle now. Yeah, why did I... I said I was feeling better. Maybe I'm, not, uh, maybe I'm not entirely better. Okay, so this should be pretty easy, though. Um, these guys are not... Uh, they're base... They're a little bit better than base, but they're uh, they're pretty weak. And we have cavalry, which is the natural enemy of archers. I would have preferred to have the cavalry unit come in as reinforcements. Uh, we probably want to back up for the first time. I want them to come forward a little bit. They'll only actually be able to come forward, like, a single space, huh? We just have to be... Like, right here, I'm actually perfectly safe. You just stay put for a turn. You... They move to here, so you can only move this far safely. Yeah, you... This is probably better. You... This guy might move to here or here. So, you can move to, like, there. That would be okay. Oh, no, no, sorry. You charge. You go after they do. Hmm. I turned off that guy's move command. Right? You all saw that he didn't have the arrow anymore. Okay. Well, some parts of this are not going that well. Okay, so he now has to leave. Hmm, he can't actually do that. Okay, never mind. I'm just thinking, like, we have to be really careful here not to lose our centaur. But he, yeah, I, I, he can't go anywhere. The fact that he did zero damage probably kills him. He's probably dead now. Because we can run, but we can't run far enough for them not to be able to chase. I can move over to here. No, all, all of these spaces are within three of that space, which that guy can get to. And I can't move... I can't move this guy over to attack him before they get their turn. I guess let's, let's run and hope he doesn't give chase. You lock that dude down. He gives chase. He kills you. No, he fails to kill you. Okay. All right, we had to get a little bit lucky there for that to work out. Boy, am I glad we did. Oh, well, that's some good extra XP on the hero. We get the two Predators, who are unfortunately completely useless. That's a real shame. That's a real shame that we... That I just, like, totally brain-spaced on that, and we can't retrofit them ever. Because they're... They're basically just dead units now. They'll be useful for the first, like... 
10 turns or something and then like the they'll get outclassed the second our enemies start developing any kind of weapons at all all right well let's uh let's explore this way with this guy it's good that he showed up to the battle in the grand scheme of things it probably won't be a big big deal but like that di it didn't have to go down that way but have just i could have just been able to do simple addition Okay, we found nothing there. The Ursa spoke true. Ziema and the other's kidnapping was aided by Rebel Forgotten, commanded by an unknown leader. They claim she is held in an enemy city. Repentant, the rebels join you. Funny how men become eager to talk before the persuasive glow of a firebrand. Unfortunately, the dissident forgotten knew little, save for the fact that Ziema and the others were taken to a distant city. It would have been easy to order these men's deaths after their confessions, but to do so would be wasteful, not to mention unjust. They were only pieces in others' designs. A draken, a vaulter, and another who kept every facet of their identity hidden are the ones who pulled the strings, they tell me. Vengeance must wait, however. First, I must find Ziemo. The fact she was captured and ferried leagues across Ariga gives me hope that she still lives. I fear, though, the state in which I will find her. I remember vividly her strength, her ambition, her hopes for our people. Back in Dagari Tanga, when we plotted our escape together, seeking a better way for the Forgotten, I remember the conviction of her words. We will not survive the coming winters by cowering in the mountains like rats. We will control Ariga by embracing who we are. We are the power in the shadows. I hope she still has the means to speak those words. Time is my greatest enemy. It was to infiltrate the city of Horlaken and reach level 3 infiltration in order to discover Ziemma's whereabouts. Okay, so this is where we're going to start using espionage. Where is Horlaken? Horlaken is all the way over here. So, uh, in order to infiltrate a city, in order to place a spy in a city, you have to have vision of that city. So we need this guy probably to run over that way and, and find that city. These guys can just run, I don't know, over here somewhere. We should just keep exploring areas near our uh, our settlement now we have the now we have the money for the predator design but it's no longer urgent i don't know what we'll do aquapulvistics is not necessarily a huge priority for us honestly sewers might be our might be our huge priority yeah let's do that we have two uh, river tiles, and aquapulvistics would be good, but there's also 3 to 23 turns left until winter, and the aquapulvistics building only produces during the summer, so it might make sense for us to wait until the end of the winter to pick this up. You know, to some degree, it depends on when in that 3 to 23 turns the winter starts. I don't know, we'll see. Oh, I don't think I looked at these, did I? Be the first to pacify 8 villages in order to get this reward... Uh, which we would like to have, obviously. And be the first to activate four luxury boosters in order to get 130 emeralds, which is kind of, you know, whatever. 130 of a resource is nice. Emeralds are a pretty bad one, though. Okay. I don't think we have anything else to do this turn. Our dust production is about to get a whole lot better. We were lucky to settle in a place where the food and industry was so good that we could afford to go Empire Mint first. Pretty unusual circumstance. So we're headed over here, then we'll uh, worry about the village after we get the ruin thing done. You are just going to head in this general direction. They are probably going to have to go across the lava. Ah, I didn't get the clicking in time. We want to go under here and get that ruin, obviously. You guys are also looking for a ruin. We could split these up into three separate units, but first of all, I kind of want to have the ability to fight minor factions for a little bit. And secondly, um, I don't want to pay the dust cost for having three separate armies out. So I think after we visit the three villages, we do have to speak to the village again. It might be worth staying close, although I guess we're pretty far off of doing it. Because it does have to be the centaur who makes the contact. So yeah, I guess it's a it's a thing to be worried about later. See what's over here. We want to finish exploring our home region as well, obviously. 
But uh, I'm noticing that this region has a lot of anomalies clustered pretty close together. Um, and good ones, too. Like, this spot right here gets you the Spiral Rock Peel and Rumbling Stones and Salt Desert, which is, uh, first of all, quite a lot of industry and dust. And secondly, uh, Rock Peel has approval on it. So this is a pretty compelling secondary uh, city location, I think. We'd be able to build from here into the two massive trees pretty quickly. Yeah, this is this would be really good. We probably don't want to. I mean, we definitely don't want to put down a. We don't want to make a settler until after the mill foundry finishes, but that might be the time. Just delay the sewer until after that. Build it while the settler is walking out toward the second location. I actually like that quite a bit. Man, that dust thing is really going to bother me. I can tell you what happened. For some reason, in my head, I was like, I need 10 dust. So let's set this so that I get just, you know, the smallest amount of dust that is greater than 10. But obviously, I needed 15. I, I don't know where... I don't know where that came from. <coughs> Pardon me, I can feel the, uh... Feel the effect of having to talk so much a little bit here. Okay, so we got ourselves a break wall, and now it's just a matter of running all this way. I bet this is probably not, it's not as many turns of movement as it looks like. That guy's pretty fast, but it still is quite a few turns. Over here we have some eyeless ones. Oh, what is the minor faction in this region? Can I find a village? Silix, okay. Did I get a quest from them? You know, I might not have actually spoken to them. We definitely should, if we're thinking that might be a place that we're going to settle. Alright, so what's next? We do have dyes in our home region, so open pit mine is not terrible. Uh, mercenary market, obviously, is something we would like to get eventually. We don't have the dust to take advantage of it right now while we're still getting all of our dust through... Um, or while we're still getting all of our tech through buying it. Uh, this is a unique, twist, uh, unique tech that just gives us double dust from pillaging. Pillaging is pretty valuable. Uh, we will definitely be doing some pillaging, so we do want to pick Dust Sense up at some point. But probably not until we are close enough to another player to actually do some. Although it looks like Pink is settling toward me, so might not be that far away. Obviously the other players don't care for you pillaging their stuff. Let's just put something in the queue. Okay, so it's 106 Dust to buy the next thing. I don't know that we need to right this second. Yeah, I mean, obviously we will need that at some point. Uh, there are no strategic resources in How Weird. We can see that there are no deposits we haven't found yet. And it looks like there may not be any in Dells either. So that might be an argument against Dells as a second settle. Maybe Nathan would be a good way to go. It doesn't have great anomalies, but like we could settle right here on top of this and get all of that river. And then we already have the population pacified and we'd have a titanium uh, deposit something to think about don't have to make the decision just yet the settler's not out okay so we're not going to get another point of population before the settle no matter what this guy's going to come out considerably faster than five turns from now because uh, we don't even have the obviously the bonus from the mill foundry yet i wonder if we want to retime that okay these guys would be pacified if we brought them titanium i think we're just going to destroy this village um eyeless ones are really easy to fight what is what is this region? I've never seen a region so small before. Yeah, eyeless ones are easy to bring down, and there's no way I'm doing that quest, so... Especially since we're not going to settle here, so I don't care if they're pro properly pacified. This is a very strange little region. I've never seen one that tiny. Okay, this is going to be pretty straightforward. So... We shoot him, and it puts one mark up. You can see the number of marks you can put on an, an enemy caps at three. These are really not good fighters. Still pretty bad damage because they're, uh, you know, uh, completely base. Once you have some strategic weapons, the damage bonus from the Hunter's Mark really, uh, really amps up. 
There's no Hunter's Mark debuff available over here, which is unfortunate because that's the area where you can see what the uh, tooltip text is. But it's marked until the next two rounds, 20% extra damage for each mark. So yeah, as we get our damage value up higher, obviously that effect increases in value. Right now it's adding like four damage to each attack. So we got 30 dust in addition to the XP. We move over here and get this dust as well. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest with you. I was a little worried when we saw our initial location there. It's pretty, uh, pretty, pretty bad. But this is turned around. This is turned into actually really good. All right, so we're gonna have to cross the lava somewhere here. I should definitely not end my turn in it. Oh, uh, what do I want to do with you? Yes, did we? We didn't get a quest from these guys yet, did we? The cult only have one region, but it's very large and weirdly shaped. Okay, make sure there's no enemy here in five turns. I would love for that to be the case. We'll see. Something tells me that because the cult is adjacent to this village, it will not still exist in five turns. We're probably not getting that reward. So uh, <laughs> don't get your heart set on it, but who knows? Maybe we'll get lucky. Okay. One advantage of settling in nothing is that we would be able to get out to the water pretty easily. That might well be worth doing. You know what? I am go I'm just going to go ahead and pick up Mercenary Market. We know we're going to need it eventually. How expensive are heroes right now? Two, uh, 250 to 300. Probably we will not be able to take advantage of that anytime soon, but who knows? We might get lucky. Might get lucky enough. Alright, let's step in the big river of fire for a moment here. Return to the... Okay, so that's not happening. Obviously, our guy here cannot take on a Kazanji village by himself. Gift 8 die to the Nidia. Well... I don't have a die, and if I did have it, I probably wouldn't give it to them. I don't know if I want to attack them right now, because Nidia are a little bit tougher. You know what, I don't have to make the decision right this second. Let's give third builder Guliyawa a turn to regen health, and then we'll have this guy run over. I might be able to get in reinforcement range. We might be able to go 4v2. We can probably take them down. I think it's probably worth doing. So here's a question. Do I want to settle before turn 20? I suspect we're not getting an Empire plan, so yeah, I think so. And the reason we're not getting an Empire plan is because um, use of the espionage system requires spending uh, influence. I'm probably just going to skip the first Empire plan to ensure that we can uh, implant our spy quickly. I think it's worthwhile. So yeah, we'll just we'll get that settler out right away and we'll get the city down. Honestly, I might go for two fast settles. I think we have the initial position here to support that maneuver. Alright, you're in range, right? Yes. I think we can take two Nidia. I want the XP and I want whatever the loot is gonna be. Balance of power bar thinks we can take the two Nidia. Gosh, I hope my uh, my incoming dude has the initiative necessary to get in on these guys. Actually, he's not going to be able to because of, uh, of the movement requirement. He's not going to be able to reach them. So maybe the play here is we back way off. Like, they have four speed. Can we get far enough back that they couldn't attack us? This guy can go one, two, three, four. No, is the answer to that question. Yes, they can both reach... They could, they could reach these two locations. So I cannot prevent them from attacking me. I can, I can make it so only one of them can attack me now. Kind of want to try to stand so that they don't get their circular attack off on more than one of us. But we also have to be in attack range, right? This guy could be here. 
who can move to here to there and attack. This guy can step over here before firing his bow. So, like, we have you move to here, just trying to minimize the damage they deal. You can't do very much. In fact, yeah, you're going to hand them a circular attack on this first turn. You get that guy from there. Okay. But then we have the initiative, initiative advantage, so they won't be able to get any more circular attacks off. Also, uh, really hating all the zero damage. Okay, they chose, he chose not to go for the double, which I really appreciate. So now I don't have to worry about this anymore, because they don't get to attack at all. So we can, we can morale blob up a little bit. They do not have sweep strike back, they just have circular attack. Yeah, okay. So, 30 more dust from that. And then we can search these ruins with the hero. I'm not going to search any of this stuff with this guy. Maybe I actually just want to fold this guy into this army. I don't know. I guess, again, it's not a, not a decision we have the ability to make this turn, so let's not worry about it. The thing is, the hero needs to search quickly because we're just about to be able to embed him, and I think we want to do it the very, the very instant that we can. Let's see what we got going on over here. Cliffs, forests, a lot of very inconvenient stuff. Uh, we could stop and talk to these hernas on the way past, I guess. Do that and then still be over here pretty soon. So somebody's got to head back in this direction to complete the quest as soon as we possibly can. Oh, and it's about to be eclipse time. We are, in fact, getting an eclipse, which I like very much. Oh, the cult walked next to me for a second, so they met us. Uh, I don't think I want to interfere with that guy. Like, we could obviously just kill that guy. I don't know that I think that it's worthwhile to do so, though. Okay, our hero is leveling up, so we get plus 50% seniority bonus. Remember that, it's going to be meaningful in a second here when I start explaining the espionage system. Yeah, I don't know that it really helps us to mess with the these poor dudes. So let's send this guy, I guess he's a little inconvenient. Let's send this guy home. Because there's, um, there's temple ruins here and here that we can search once the eclipse starts. These two can search that. I think our hero's about to be assigned, so we don't have to worry about him so much. Okay, it takes 20, uh, 20 influence to set our hero into the city, and we should do that right away, I believe. Okay, so let's talk about this. First of all, Upon entering the city, we gained access to pink on the scoreboard. Doesn't really give us any information right now. Uh, we also gained access to the production queue of Horlockin. In fact, we can click on Horlockin and see everything about it. We can see what, what buildings they've built already, um, what they're currently building. We see their whole security situation here. You can see their security level is currently 30%. We'll talk about that in a little bit as well. Yeah, they're doing all right, looks like. Uh, now that we are infiltrated, we are producing a certain number of infiltration points every turn. You can see over here the infiltration level. Uh, we are making 12 infiltration points per turn. We will hit level 2 infiltration once we've reached 45.9 or more uh, infiltration points. Why are we getting 12 each level? That is because of our spying capacity. You can see here uh, we have spying 4. All Forgotten Heroes have spying 4. Heroes of other races are variably bad at spying. Uh, I think Morgar get spying three. Uh, most factions have spying two. Uh, which causes them to produce way fewer infiltration points. And infiltration points are by a large margin the most important thing when spying. Uh, our hero actually has... Every hero has access to this skill, which gives you a significant number of infiltration points. Honestly, 
That is a significant number. Maybe I should have gone for that instead of going for double or nothing first. Uh, but double or nothing is also good. So seniority bonus is another source of infiltration points. I, I definitely went for the wrong skill first. That's something we can clean up on, uh, on future attempts. Uh, so you can see here, your seniority level starts at zero. Every time you do a job, you will gain seniority in the city based on the level of infiltration your spy had when you did the job. Uh, then, from then on, whenever you get infiltration points in the city, you'll get extra infiltration points equal to your seniority level. So the seniority bonus, uh, you can see how it does produce extra infiltration, but it would have been way better to go for the uh, the five-point skill first. That is definitely an error. Um, we need to... Actually, did it tell us what we need to do here yet? No, okay, it'll uh, uh, reach level three of infiltration. Okay, so we basically just have to sit here. We don't have to do anything else. Our spy is going to accumulate infiltration points and hit level three on his own eventually. So we'll just we'll just wait on that. And then once we hit uh, level three, we'll we'll spend some influence to do a spy action. We'll talk about the spy actions a little bit more when we actually perform one. All right. Well, you're over here, so you may as well look around. Find me some ruins or something. I suppose show me this area. I want to see what all this stuff looks like. We can see that pink is only in two regions currently. I think pink is probably our our focus. Like we, if we're going to kill somebody, it's not going to be green. It's going to be pink. I don't know for sure that we do want to kill somebody super early. We probably do. I probably want to steal all their stuff. But green is uh, green is not going to provide us with enough benefit for all the effort we're going to have to go to to kill them. I'd like to I'd like to kill somebody who's going to pay out a little bit better. You know. Enter era two within the next ten turns for fifteen wine. Okay, how close are we to that? I am two technologies off. That's interesting. I mean, I want to spend dust buying heroes, obviously. What would the next tech be? One thirty-seven. Hmm. We'll see. We'll see. Actually, do I want to take this guy this way instead? Because we can get both, right? Yeah, let's let's go this way first, and then we'll loop around and grab those. I think that's the the method that's going to most likely result in me getting all of it. I guess there's yeah, there's loot up there, but also I don't want to walk right next to their city. Okay, that's a temple rune. You can see it is no longer eclipsed. They already eclipse searched it, but we could still do a normal search on it. Okay, 40 dust is a very welcome find. We're going to be able to complete this next turn. You guys get to grab that for me. Which is another 80 dust. Man, we probably get to hire a governor and do the other thing, huh? So, John Port, the Shadow, has dust boost 3. He's our man, probably. Dust efficiency 2... Dust Efficiency 3. You're a Mizari hero, so you have that, that Vaulter tree that I don't care for very much. I think John Port is a fantastic fit for our needs. Uh, we had to do that as well. But hey, John Port, get in this city and start producing huge amounts of dust immediately. Yeah, that's just, that's just wonderful. So do we produce another settler? I'm kind of thinking that we maybe just, um, just go really hard here. Grab Dells and Nathan right away. Uh, first of all, that'll wall pink off. Uh, we could take Galarath, which would be a little awkward for them. I don't actually like Galarath. I mean, that's the whole point we didn't settle... Uh, the whole point of us not settling there in the first place, right? So if we're going to take both of these, which one do we get first? I don't know that it really matters. I suppose it makes the most sense to take the one where I've already pacified the people. So where... We probably settle over here by the river, right? This thing and the... Uh, the weird hexagonal river. I don't know exactly where in there, but it's somewhere in there. He can he can run past this eclipsed temple and loot it for us on the way. So yeah, let's produce another settler. Let's uh, let's go fast here. Let's have three cities by turn twenty. Empire plan be damned. <clears throat> Let's 
My throat feels weird. I'm fine, but it, my, it, it feels like my throat is vibrating. I don't really know what to make of that. I mean, I guess, like, when I'm speaking, it literally is vibrating, but it feels like it's vibrating even when I'm not. Yep, no big surprise on us not getting that. Run out of all of our fancy resources. Let's have you pop over here and speak to this village. Oh god, they're gonna destroy it! No! Don't you dare! Is this just two preachers? Oh man, I wish I knew where their city was. I can't attack them, they're in their territory anyway. If they convert that village before we finish the quest, though, I'm going to be very annoyed. We did at least get the Titanium. I'm happy about that. But I took a slightly slower route back to the village because I wanted to get ruins. And now we might not get the easy pacification at all. It really is crummy. You know what's not crummy, though, is all of this dust. So what's the next thing? The next thing is... Hey, we, we need a bunch of stuff yet. The next thing is open pit mine. We'll take advantage of that pretty soon. Uh, did we talk to this region's minor faction yet? We did not. Colonize the region of Uska. We might, but it won't be for a long time. And we could probably kill two Sisters of Mercy, even with these bad predators. Well, maybe we could. No, I'm not going to bother. Honestly, I, there's a chance we would fail at that. With, if we still had the hero, I'd go after it, no doubt. But things being as they are. Alright, come on, give me one more turn of Dust Eclipse. I want this ruin really badly. Also, that ruin, I would get both of these. Oh man, please don't let the Eclipse end this turn. Fingers crossed. Okay, awesome. So we get three more Eclipse searches. Also, there's combat happening. Oh, they attacked my Centaur. That's fine. That's got them distracted, so let's not resolve that battle just yet. I want the easy pacification, but I also want this loot really badly. Oh, I had not, I had not normally searched that ruin yet. Well, whatever. That's not time sensitive. We'll get that. Oh my god, that's so much money. So we enter Tech Era 2. For once, the notification that a player has entered a new era is because of us. Weird. So we know winter's going to start quite soon, right? I'm not in a hurry to pick up Aquapulvistics or Seed Storage here. Army in Brenla has the treasure you seek. I don't... I don't care. I don't care about that. I don't want your glass deal. Okay, no ruins up here. So we got to figure out where we want to settle exactly. Do I want to put down right on the coast? We could buy the ability to make ships and then maybe buy some ships. 12 to 12... Versus 9214. I think I want to put down on top of the anomaly, actually. Mm, do I? No, I want I want water access. This is a worse settle. But I want the I want I want to be able to put out ships. We'll do that. Uh, do we have we do not have any luxuries, so it's not nothing to think about aside from just putting the city down. I'm not even going to get it next turn. I may, be, I may have pushed it a little bit here. We could... put improved movement 2 on that guy. Give him the 2 points of movement. He would need to make that happen. Yeah, you know what? That has a lot of value, actually. Our dude's just being fast. Oh, our centaur's dead. Oh no, our centaur narrowly survives. And that guy had to spend so much movement coming after me that he can't destroy the village this turn. Um, The centaur can, like, check stuff up, out down here, I guess? He can be pretty far away from home. Uh, 
Okay, 50 dust. The uh, the rewards you get from ruins change as players uh, enter eras. So 50 is a uh, 50 is a value that we can now get from ruins. I believe at the start of the game you can only get 30, 40, or 70. Uh, obviously, with different rarities. Alright, come on, let me get this. Really love to have these two dudes just convert immediately. Hey. Yeah, I got him. So, 40 more dust in addition to now just having dudes. Uh, we got our 15 wine, which is awesome. We will definitely pop that right now as we are about to place a city. Uh, I see that our spy has infiltration leveled up to level 2. And the eclipse is still happening. Yeah, this is going, like, super well, actually. 85, wow, 85 plus 70. Not a bad haul on that one. Not a lot of movement confluxes around. Alright, so let's see. Where would you like to go next? I think we have actually searched both of these already. But maybe it's time to have the scouts come home and, uh, and group up a little bit. Yeah, he's healed enough from his last lava walk that he could make another one. That's an eclipsed ruin. I mean, we could get there. If the eclipse lasts another turn. It's definitely going to end any second now. We should not we should not rely on anything still being available. But if it does go on another turn, we're going to get some good stuff. Okay. For five turns, ensure that you have at least four of the five existing unit classes in your Empire Garrisons. Well, that's not going to happen. Alright, I think we want to put down, right? I don't think there's any reason not to put down. So we go like that, probably. Uh, we're just, uh, we're just a tiny bit short of fervent, but we definitely want to get our sewer system up next. Die extractors after that. Uh, in influence is going to be really important in this game. So we're we're going to need a lot of it. You guys probably have to focus on industry here, or I guess I could just buy the mill foundry. No, no, no. Hold on. We need to use our money for heroes and technology. Honestly, though, a good hero right now, right at the beginning of this city's existence, would be very valuable. Oh, a really early exit the Chosen is very compelling. And none of these other heroes are totally amazing. Dust Efficiency 2 is cool. Now let's get exit. I want, I want good governors right now. Alright, so that city is going to produce its stuff pretty quickly now. We're going to take Dells over. Man, this is a lot of anomalies in short, in a really, really close proximity. I have no idea why this city is so good, or why this uh, region is so good. Over here, we can see another player. I think things are looking pretty good for us. So, why don't we... Let's set Dells down and then end the video there. Okay, the eclipse has ended, which is a shame, but frankly, we got more time in it than I thought we were going to. Wow, this was also ruins. If the thing had gone on one more turn, we would have gotten so much extra dust. Wow, 100 dust, man, we're getting really lucky. Build an influence improvement. I think this will fire when we uh, build that sewer. Because the sewer does uh, give you plus one influence in the city. So we might be about to get 25 free titanium. Uh, yeah, you, I think, just need to come home. Now that you're not interested in searching that anymore, I guess we gotta we gotta talk to these Silics, right? I think I didn't talk to the Silics in the region, and we definitely should. Bestow 10 gold and 10 grass silk upon the Seratan tribe. Nope. Absolutely not. What are you, crazy? That's a huge amount of resources. Alright, so where exactly do we want to put our settler? I think it's I think it's gotta be by the spiral rock peel, because that's the only one of these anomalies in this area that gives us approval. God, there's so many anomalies in this region. Why is it like this here? 
I guess this one also gives approval. But I don't want to settle in the center, or in the far end of the zone. I want to settle near the center because we can expand out in so many directions so usefully. I think it's right here. No, it's right here. Sorry. Fairly certain. 5, 16, 13 with 10 approval. Okay. Do we want Empire Mint before sewers? Uncertain. Yes, it's not it's not a decision I have to make right now. Alright, so one more turn here. It's gonna be winter very soon. Winter follows the eclipse pretty closely, generally. So is there anything we need to do before settling the city? I don't think so, right? In the nearby region of Quakic, capture or destroy the city in order to get Central Market and Pacification. Well, this is a village we're going to have to destroy. I mean, I would love to. I'm assuming this is Nequakic. Right, yeah, this is the only nearby region that has a city. It's a, it's adjacent to Dells. I bet that's it. I guess we could go have a look at who that is. We could settle the city first and then put our um, put our garrison to work on the uh, the battle. Oh wow, we're actually going to get this if I just pacify one more village. And we need to get enough boosters together to activate one, or enough luxury resources together to get one more booster in order to get a huge amount of emeralds. Again, emeralds are pretty bad, but any luxury resource is valuable in that quantity. Use it for a lot of things. You just move over here for a second. I'm not, I'm not quite ready to pull that trigger yet. Anything else we need to do? No, I guess I'm done. It feels like there was something else I was going to do. Uh, let's have a look at some of these other legendary deeds. So this is just defeat three armies led by a hero. This is have a city's total income from primary trade routes of at least 20 dust. This is actually totally reasonable. We could, we could get this. If the next thing we buy is Imperial Highways, and then we actually make sure to build them, which I think is a pretty reasonable path for us to pursue here. Yeah, I think that's probably the way we want to go. Where are we at on our hero? Our hero will hit level 3 in 4 turns. So our faction quest is coming along as fast as it can come along. There's nothing we can really do to uh, to help improve that. Like, this would have been 1711... Jesus. 171111. This has approval, though, and 16 base industry. We know where we're expanding out to, but I... 17, 11, 11 is a lot of valuable resources. No, I like this better. They're both very good, though. It would definitely be correct from either position to expand out toward the other one as quickly as possible. So I'm gonna, I am gonna reverse the sewers. Let's, let's put the sewers in first. Because we can get our empire up to fervent here, and that would be really, really good. Uh, we have access now to some Ursus villages and some uh, Bos villages. Ursus reduce building costs, which I think is this is one of the best assimilation effects in the game. And I mean, it's sort of this is at least an infantry. Uh, this military unit is at least one we might potentially build because we really don't have anything tough in our uh, in our faction by default. We also don't naturally have cavalry, although our infantry sort of functions like cavalry. I don't know. I think these are both reasonable assimilates. Um, I think we do want to go for Imperial Highways right away. Just keep feeding into the, the dust machine. But after we get Imperial Highways, I honestly might go for Glory of Empire. There's a lot of stuff available to us. A lot of really valuable stuff. Aquapulvistics and Cultivation are still also here. But, man, we're going to need a lot of influence this game. Oh, we also have unique text up here. So, this one... Uh, dramatically reduces the margin of error on winter predictions, which is nice, and makes it free to infiltrate cities during the winter. 
and lowers the cost of infiltration actions, because they all have a small influence cost. Uh, this one just gives us plus three uh, infiltration points on every infiltrated hero every turn, and also increases the security of our cities. Security is the thing that uh, potentially punishes enemy spies for operating in your city. We'll talk about that a little bit more when we perform our first infiltration action. Uh, but I think I think an economically focused path is right. I know, I'm a little torn. I think, though, on the whole, this is going extremely well so far. You can see Pink is on three regions already and building a settler out to, uh, to hit a fourth. Honestly, I'm not too far off of building my next settler either. <laughs> Things are going really well so far. Uh, so that is going to be it for us for today. Thank you all so much for watching. Come back next time uh, for decision-making, and then watching this incredibly good start crash and burn, probably. And we'll see you then.